Topic Notes 1.3, the solubility of gases in seawater. This is a rainbow parrotfish, and I took this picture down in the Keys, although you can find them right here off Palm Beach County as well. And parrotfish, along with all the other fish, go through cellular respiration by taking in water and passing it along their gills where they absorb oxygen and they release CO2. Now, of course, we do the same thing, but we use lungs to do that. And there's a really big difference because in the air where we live, air is much more thin. It's easier to move in and out of our lungs, and it has a higher percentage of oxygen in it compared to water. That's why lungs don't really work so well underwater, and fish have evolved gills to do this, in which they're a little bit more effective and efficient at getting out much lower percentages of oxygen from the water. Now, this is why we are going to be talking about the solubility of gases in seawater. And it's not just oxygen. We're looking at CO2, nitrogen, things like that as well. So let's get started. Once again, let's tackle that main idea here. Dissolved gases are vital to marine life and are controlled by a number of physical, chemical, and biological factors. And of course, always pay attention to the individual learning goals per note set as well. Gases in the atmosphere, including oxygen, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen, are all in the state of equilibrium with gases dissolved in the ocean. This equilibrium is maintained through mixing as a result of turbulence and wave action. Increased turbulence makes it easier for gases in the atmosphere to dissolve into the ocean. Thus, higher concentrations of carbon dioxide and oxygen are generally found in the upper 200 meters of the ocean. Now there is some variability with this, of course. If you have smoother seas that are essentially not a lot of wave action, that's going to essentially create a thicker skin using, you know, that whole hydrogen bonding thing with surface tension, and you're going to have less exchange. You have more waves, more wind, more turbulence, then you're going to have a higher exchange. Now not all gases are created equal. Carbon dioxide is more soluble than oxygen or nitrogen because it forms carbonic acid. So it essentially has a chemical uh, reaction with something in the water. Oxygen has low solubility because it doesn't chemically combine with water. So seawater holds more carbon dioxide than oxygen. Now, if you look at these two graphs, this demonstrates the idea and concept we're talking about here. On the y-axis, we have grams of gas per kilogram of water. And on the x-axis, we have water temperature. But what I really want you to pay attention to, the difference between O2 and CO2, the two graphs. If you look at the scale of solubility for oxygen, it is uh, it starts at 0 0.01 grams of gas per kilogram of water, all the way up to 0 0.08. If you look at the solubility of carbon dioxide, it's 0.5 all the way up to 3.5 and 4. So the scales are larger for carbon dioxide because there's more carbon dioxide in the water compared to oxygen. So now let's look at that x-axis with the water temperature. The lower the temperature, the more dissolved gas can actually be held in the water. And that's essentially because as temperature increases, molecules move faster and dissolved gases evaporate. Now we know the, having dissolved oxygen around specifically is very important for marine life. So this is actually, this whole temperature thing is a pretty critical thing. If you look at the graph, as the temperature increases from 0 to 60 degrees Celsius, 60 being per, pretty warm, the, the dissolved oxygen goes down substantially. Uh, this can affect, obviously, respiration, especially in coastal systems where you might have fluctuations of temperature extremes, either very cold or very hot, like in the summer. Now let's go deep. The deeper you get into the ocean, the higher the pressure is going to be. And this does have an effect on dissolved gases. Increased depth increases the pressure. So with increased pressure, gases are better able to dissolve and stay dissolved in water. If you look at the graph over on the right, you have a solubility of oxygen on the y-axis and on the x-axis temperature. But then you'll notice there's three different colored lines with different pressures, um, four being the highest pressure, two and then one being the lowest pressure. As you can see, the higher pressure line 
correlates with the higher solubility of oxygen. Now for salinity. Gases dissolve better in lower salinity water. The less solutes essentially taking up space between water molecules, the more dissolved gases you can have in there. So gases are most soluble in fresh water, especially if you consider fresh water this may be entering the ocean. Here's a graph that demonstrates this as well. You can see the milligrams per liter of dissolved oxygen on the y-axis and salinity on the x. And you can clearly see that the higher the salinity goes, the lower the dissolved oxygen goes. Now, it's not just about abiotic processes. We can also look at biotic factors and variables as well. For example, biological processes such as photosynthesis, respiration, and decomposition all play a role in dissolved gases in the ocean. Carbon dioxide is produced during respiration and is used as a reactant in photosynthesis. So you can see that in the diagram below, right? You have essentially the reaction that goes, in this case in the diagram, to the right is photosynthesis, where you take up CO2, combine it with water and energy, and you get glucose and oxygen. With respiration, it's the opposite. You essentially burn the glucose with oxygen and you get carbon dioxide as a byproduct. That's what we breathe out. We've mostly been talking about carbon dioxide and oxygen, but nitrogen gas is actually an important component as well. And we're gonna learn about that a little bit more in the nitrogen cycle later on in the year. However, nitrogen is transformed into ammonia by a nitrogen fixing bacteria. Now this is important because it provides a usable form of nitrogen for organisms. And they use this to form proteins and other organic molecules. So it's really critical. We've already been using this term, but let's formally define dissolved oxygen as the concentration of dissolved oxygen in a solution. Now, this is really critical because marine life need oxygen for cellular respiration and all that stuff. Oxygen has a low solubility in water, and that's impacted further by temperature, salinity, and pressure, as we've learned already. Dissolved oxygen can be looked at vertically in the water column, and there's some big differences between the surface water and the deep water. At the surface, in essentially the first 200 meters, you contain the greatest concentration of dissolved oxygen. In fact, it can reach what we call supersaturation, which essentially means there's a lot of oxygen available. Now, this is because there's a lot of water motion and turbulence mixing at the surface, which allows a lot of gas exchange with the atmosphere. Also, this is the layer where you have all the sunlight. It's the photic zone. So you have a lot of photosynthesis going on, producing a lot of oxygen. Now, if you look at dissolved oxygen along surface waters globally, you're gonna notice some trends. For example, in tropical waters, there's higher temperatures and thus there's a reduced concentration of dissolved oxygen. Whereas in polar regions, there is a much, it's much cooler and thus more dissolved oxygen can be held in the water, and so you have higher concentrations of DO. Now below the surface area, oxygen levels decrease rather dramatically. In fact, we give it a special name, the oxygen minimum layer or zone. And the layer, it's the layer within the ocean where the concentration of dissolved oxygen is at its lowest, and it's usually between 100 and 1,000 meters deep. Marine life in this zone really have to have special adaptations to deal with low dissolved oxygen, including essentially inactivity, reduced need for oxygen, reduced uh, metabolic rates, uh, more effective and efficient gills, specialized um, amounts of hemoglobin, things like that. So why does the oxygen get so low here? Well, there's a few factors. First, you are below the photic zone, essentially. There's not enough sunlight to produce photosynthesis, so there's no longer any oxygen being added through that process. You're also deep enough where you're far away from the surface, so there's no oxygen being added through surface um, kind of turbulence. But you still have a lot of marine life going through cellular respiration, and that's taking away a lot of the oxygen. Below the oxygen minimum zone, the dissolved oxygen levels actually increase. Why is that? Well, the solubility of oxygen increases with decreasing temperature and increasing pressure. So that actually factors in. There's also a lack of food and thus a decrease in re respiration. There's just less marine life down there. Um, now, don't get me wrong, there is marine life all the way to the deepest part of the ocean, but 
there is less of it. And then because there's less of it, there's less respiration, so less oxygen is being taken out of the water. All right, that is the end of the notes for today. Remember the main idea here is the dissolved gases are vital to marine life and are controlled by a number of physical, chemical, and biological factors. And again, make sure you pay attention to those specific learning goals. And until next time, keep learning.